A total of 165 assembly constituencies across Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Goa vote today in the second and second largest phase of these elections. As you can see, a polling has begun in Uttarakhand. Polling began at 8 a.m. Now, this will conclude polling in Uttarakhand and Goa in slightly more than a quarter of the assembly constituencies in Uttar Pradesh. 55 constituencies spread across nine districts of UP are voting today amid an increasingly shrill and polarized campaign in the state. So there you can see a brisk uh, polling is taking place. The Prime Minister also tweeted this morning. Polling will be held across Uttarakhand, Goa and in parts of Uttar Pradesh. I call upon all those who are eligible to vote today and do so in record numbers and strengthen the festival of democracy. So a lot of interest in the Goa elections this time around uh, with the Trinamool uh, Congress also and the Yamabi party really focusing on the tiny state. The fate of 40 seats is at stake in Goa with as many as eight national and regional parties in the fray. India's smallest state boasts of a rich history of defections horse trading and fractured mandate. So it's been, uh, it's been a difficult election to call. Having been in power for 10 years, the incumbent BJP led by Chief Minister Pramod Savant is facing stiff competition from a bunch of parties in the opposition which include the Congress, the Ahmadmi Party and the Trinamool MGP Alliance. NDTV's Rishika sent us this report from a green polling booth where the governor had come early in the morning and cast the first vote. Well, it is the 14th of February and early this morning polling has begun in Goa. We are coming to you from a green polling station here in Donapola. And I just want to take our viewers through some of the arrangements that have been made here. So as you can see, uh, there is masks that are being given to those who aren't wearing them. There are temperature checks and interestingly, there are also these plastic gloves uh, that are in fact being given uh, to all uh, voters who are coming here to cast their mandate. This, like I said, is a green polling station. And I'm going, going to just take you through what are some of the arrangements that have been made. So, of course, all the election color, you have tricolor balloons. This is, like I said, a green polling station. So, a lot of thatch, bamboo, uh, jute has been used. As you can see, all of these facades have been created in, uh, in bamboo. It is, uh, uh, it's really nicely done up. There are hand sanitizers. There are demarcations, as you can see, uh, for social distancing norms uh, to be maintained. Uh, there is waste segregation. So I, I just like to point out, this is extremely interesting, there's waste segregation for biomedical waste uh, as well as regular waste because uh, remember people are being given gloves, people are being given masks and then they are being asked like, like you can see here to dispose of uh, their masks in this corner. And uh, of course uh, there is a photo booth that has been made here which is extremely interesting. Uh, it says, I am ready to vote, go vote. So very, very colorful uh, photo booth that has actually been uh, made here for voters to come uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, capture that moment that they have in fact cast their mandate. There is wheelchair assistance uh, that is available. This is a government school complex. So there's wheelchair assistance uh, that's available. Uh, there is of course, uh, you know, provisions for water that have uh, been made for voters. This here is a, is a government school which is really all geared up uh, for voters. Uh, to come out and cast their mandate with full COVID protocols uh, in place. And of course, like I said, this is a green polling booth um, with all the facades being created. Sure, in fact, nice uh, you know, with jute, with bamboo, uh, with thatch. So, um, and of course, a lot of uh, election color. So this is uh, the inside picture of polling booth. You have a few voters who have in fact come here uh, early this morning and uh, they are of course ca casting their vote this morning. So we'll of course continue to get you the pulse of uh, the voters, people who are of course casting their mandate. But um, as you can see, this is, uh, uh, you know, all of the election color here in full display. This, like I said, is a government school uh, and as you can see, it's interesting, an entire solar system that's actually uh, been made right here and a steady stream, a steady stream of voters coming in early this morning with full COVID protocols in place to ensure that social distancing is maintained, people are wearing proper masks, they are even being given plastic gloves uh, so that the entire process of voting, casting their vote is in fact smooth. And uh, Rishika also spoke uh, to the governor of Goa, who is one of the first to arrive at the polling booth and cast his vote. We have the governor of Goa joining us exclusively here on uh, NDTV. He was the first person this morning to cast his vote. How are you feeling, sir? The Goa is concerned. The election 
മാൽ പ്രാക്ടീസസ് ഓർ സച്ച് അൺടുവേഡ് ഇൻസിഡൻസ് സർ നോട്ട് ഇൻ ഗോവ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ട്രഡീഷൻ ഓഫ് ദി സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദീസ് എലക്ഷൻ ഓൾസോ ഇലക്ഷൻ കമ്മീഷൻ ഹാസ് ഡൺ വണ്ടർഫുൾ ജോബ് ബിക്കോസ് ദേ മേ വീഡ് എൻലൈറ്റൺ ദ പബ്ലിക് ഓൺ ദാറ്റ് ആസ്പെക്ട് ആൻഡ് ഈവൻ സപ്ലൈഡ് മെറ്റീരിയൽസ് ആൻഡ് ഗൈഡ് ലൈൻസ് ഓൾസോ ഗീവൺ so the uh, our country is concerned uh, our uh, election system is perfect and we are considered as the largest democracy in the world since we opted and uh, adopted and strictly trying to follow this adult franchise and a free and fair election uh, one thing I, i i i studied about goa there's no political clashes and uh, untoward incidents are also very very Uh, in fact it is little uh, only some uh, minor incidents are there and in such a way i i i can very well say that the people of goa are uh, having an higher democratic concepts and uh, uh, political concepts and i appreciate all political parties there is a worry about political values of the leaders with the high rate of defection sir so that is a different thing i don't want to make any comment on that Right thank you so much sir for speaking with NDTV all right so that was the governor of uh, Goa Mr Pillai he was uh, among the first few people to cast his mandate he actually arrived at the Donapala constituency here um, at 655 sharp and he has in fact cast his vote in fact we also have a uh, ma'am with us here ma'am would you would you like to tell us how you're feeling you just cast your vote i am very happy very happy first vote we have done from goa no yes you it's your first vote here in goa and you've been here since 655 i saw you patiently waiting you sanitized your hands wore your gloves and you went into vote yes, yes i am very very happy i have voted no no nothing nothing else no. right you, you any any comment you want to make on the unfortunate nature of defections that goa has seen it it, it worries the electorate it worries the voters that they may vote for a party a, a candidate from a party and he might just switch i'm not going to all right so simply they are calmly waiting for that no nothing here simply and peacefully they are waiting how did you like the green election booth it's all made with bamboo and thatch very nicely done very nice it's very nice it is an eco friendly a uh, booth no first time that is the, the, it's not seen in kerala this is the first time we are seen right in go i know thank you so much for speaking with ndtv ma'am Alright, Rishika, speaking there to the governor and his uh, wife as they were the first to cast their vote, she also spoke to another voter who arrived on a cycle. So I have a voter with me who cycled to the polling station this morning. Sir, what's your name? My name is Ben Saldana. And you came early this morning on your cycle to cast your vote? That's right. How, how are you feeling? Oh, perfect. I'm beautiful. I uh, fulfill my democratic uh, responsibilities and I'm very excited to have voted again and And good so tell me tell me some of the issues what what was at top of your mind as you went to press that button uh, uh, one thing uh, which was important for me was uh, i don't want the country to split so my vote was accordingly to that intention and important is also the development of this place another important point was corruption and so we voted for a for a for a politician who we feel was less corrupt Right. Well thank you so much for speaking with NDTV. Yeah, yeah. Have a good day ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for covering. All me. all right. So there you have it. Uh, ben has come early this morning on his cycle to cast his vote uh, with camera person Sanjay Mandal. This is Rishika Barua in Goa for NDTV. All right. So brisk voting there in Goa and let's go across to Uttar Pradesh where a total of 55 constituencies spread across nine districts go to polls in the second phase of the UP election. Uh, this phase of the assembly polls in the state presents a region where the BJP's position has been a bit tentative uh, despite imposing uh, performances elsewhere in the state. One of the reasons is the higher proportion of Muslims in many of the constituencies going to vote in this phase 2 of the seven phase elections in the state. the recent trend suggests that this is the strongest phase for the samajwadi party and it's in an alliance with the rld of the 55 seats uh, the bjp uh, won 38 in 2017 the samajwadi party had won 15 remember the last time around it was in an alliance with the bsp the congress had won 2 So you can see the polling are uh, taking place for the second phase of the UP elections are uh, several key contests like in Rampur also being watched very very closely. 
And uh, let's take a look now at Uttarakhand that has a single uh, f- phase of polling today. So the polling in Uttarakhand will be wrapped up uh, today itself. And uh, Uttarakhand has always uh, uh, been in fact uh, going between the BJP and the Congress uh, in the state. They've always uh, voted for one or the other. So it's been a bit of a alternating uh, s- a sort of election in uh, Uttarakhand and uh, it's seen several chief minister changes. In fact, even just in the last uh, uh, five years, it's seen three uh, chief ministers. So 70 uh, member assembly constituency. And as we said, it's alternated between the BJP and Congress. Uh, So the BJP has a tough task of beating uh, the anti-incumbency and this electoral trend of the incumbent government being voted out. Let's go across to Akshay now for more uh, on uh, the polling there. And Akshay, uh, polling in Uttarakhand began at 8 a.m., not 7 a.m. as it has elsewhere. And uh, tell us more about some of the key contests. And uh, the BJP has a tough task ahead of it to beat the anti-incumbency. First of all, first of all, Gargi, I would like to speak to the voters who have come out. Uh, uh, vote dal di aap. Ah, to sabse pehle ek baat batayega kaisa matlab mehsus ho raha hai? Kya kaisa lag raha hai aapko matlab vote dalne ke baad? Subah subah kafi jaldi log aa gaye yahan par. Sahi lag raha hai. Kya karein? Koi kam mein jaane wale hain, koi kahi jaane wale hain, to jaldi dal diye. Aaj ek baat batayega. Yahan par ab khadima se hai. मुख्यमंत्री यहां से चुनाव लड़ते हैं यहीं पर वोट भी डालेंगे इसी जगह पर तो मेन इश्यूज क्या है आपके यहां पर क्या परेशानियां हैं आपको घर पे होती है जो परेशानियां अब परेशानी तो है अब रोड सही नहीं बनती है कहीं कहीं कुछ ऐसा है कहीं तो अच्छा है कहीं खराब है आपके यहां पर भी खराब रोड है कहीं तो अब अब बन रही है बना रहे हैं पहले नहीं बने पहले नहीं बनी थी 10 साल से लेकिन जो पुष्कर सिंह धामी है वही विधायक है हां बना है विचार और क्या अब बना रहे हैं सब कुछ कर रहे हैं सुविधा है कि नहीं हां अच्छा तो आ, और इसके अलावा क्या लगता है कि आ, बाकी सब आ, लोग जल्दी ही आप पे वोट करते हैं या फिर सारे दिन आते रहेंगे आपके हिसाब से घर वाले सब आ गए वोट करने के अभी नहीं अच्छा अभी आएंगे हां आएंगे सो वी जस्ट वांटेड टू गेट सम वॉइसेस ऑफ द वोटर्स एक्चुअली गार्गी बिकॉज़ बिफोर वी टॉक अबाउट द की कंटेस्ट की द द कंस्टिट्यूएंसीज आर द मेजर इश्यूज ऑफ द पीपल इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट टू इनफैक्ट स्पीक टू द पीपल यू कैन सी देयर आर क्यूज ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ वोटर्स हियर यूजुअली इन द माउंटेन एज यू मस्ट बी नोइंग एज वेल people get up early in the morning and people actually were waiting to uh, in fact cast their vote the voting started at 8 am and will continue till 6 pm uh, and there are a lot of issues of the people as uh, the lady just pointed out that infrastructure even in the constituency of the chief minister is a key issue so we can only imagine what exactly is the state of the affairs uh, in in the hilly areas uh, we talk about employment unemployment uh, if we talk about rising inflation all of these are key concerns of the state so uh, you can also see those these people uh, now showing their uh, finger here they have cast their votes and uh, will try and speak to these people as well ab ye kaise lag raha hai ek bar apni ungli dikhayenge wo dal di aapne ji ha to 10 saal se vidhayak hai yahan pe mukhyamantri is bar bhi khade ho rahe hai ab lekin kuch concerns hai bhi kuch cheeze kuch improvement ki zarurat hai aapke ilake mein khatima mein dekhiye kuch cheez mein kaam kaam karne ki bhi zarurat hai kaam jo hua hai फिलहाल अपने दायरे से काम सही हुआ है हाँ। ना जो छह महीने का जो मौका मिला इन छह महीनों में जो भी काम हुआ है एकदम लाजवाब काम हुआ है अच्छा। ये भी नहीं कि नहीं हुआ है हाँ। लेकिन कुछ कुछ पूरे राज्य की अगर बात की जाए रोजगार की या फिर महंगाई की देखो रोजगार जो भी है हाँ। है ही वो तो हाँ। अपने हिसाब से इशू है मतलब कंसर्न है जी रोजगार तो मिलने वालों को मिल नहीं रहा है नहीं मिल करने से सब होता है नहीं करने से कुछ नहीं होता है हमारा तो ये मानना है और महंगाई के बारे में थोड़ी महंगाई भी लोग कहते हैं कि मुद्दा बन रहा है महंगाई का मुद्दा देखिए समय के हिसाब से आदमी ऐटोमोटिक जो चीज है वो चीज को देखता है क्या है क्या नहीं है आदमी को, को मतलब खुद अपने आप में ही होनी चाहिए समझ ठीक है सो दिस इज वॉट द पीपल ऑल्सो हैव टू सी दैट द इश्यूज आर श्योर देर आर सर्टन कंसर्न बट एज फार एज दूर ऑफ द चीफ मिनिस्टर इज कंसर्न इट हैज ओनली बीन सिक्स मंथ सो ऑल्सो पॉइंटिंग आउट Uh, to a larger concern for the for the state of uttarakhand 
uh, that uh, the political instability has been here despite uh, a huge majority uh, the bharatiya janata party had to change three chief ministers uh, and in fact that is also a concern that in the past 10 years uh, there have been uh, several chief ministers across the party line that were changed uh, and um, none of them have completed that tenure so a uh, political instability also leads to a lot of uh, policies that that uh, some chief minister brings and that it gets discontinued so this is also a concern uh, among, among the others uh, like uh, the unemployment as we were talking about uh, the rising inflation so uh, it remains to be seen who exactly will come back to power but uh, the voters have already started to come All right, Akshay. They are reporting uh, from a polling booth in Uttarakhand. Uh, the polling began at eight uh, this morning in Uttarakhand for its 70 uh, con- assembly constituencies. We'll slip into a short break and get you more uh, from uh, UP on the other side. Stay with us. Welcome back to the second phase of polling in UP today where a total of 55 constituencies spread across nine districts are going to polls let's go across to Sanket who joins us from Rampur uh, Saurabh also joins us from Bareilly and Sanket Rampur is one of the closely watched contests in this phase Well yes uh, and uh, good morning to you the thing is that uh, both in phase 1 and phase 2 it was foggy in the morning and then got uh, really clear by the afternoon i think that uh, can be a political metaphor as well because in the morning things are very foggy about the political prospects of all the candidates but by afternoon will they get a great amount of clarity which way the public is voting uh, we are in rampur this is of course the battle royal uh, where the royals of rampur are uh, contesting very interesting contest the father is contesting in rampur uh, for the congress party the son is a candidate of apna dal which is an alliance of the bjp from suar tanda which is another constituency in rampur the samajwadi party candidate azam khan is in jail and in suar the son of azam khan abdullah azam is in contest so uh, it's pretty much all over the place the bjp feels that its hindu candidate from rampur has definitely a shot because the bjp's calculation is that even if the rampur constituency has 58% muslims many muslims are going to vote for the bjp that's their calculation this time around however azam khan jailed azam khan and the samajwadi party is hopeful that it is the sentiment which is going to power through all permutation combination that the bharatiya janata party tries to put ahead of each election so will sentiment win or will the bjp be able to power on now we also spoke to mukhtar abbas nakvi just a short while ago in fact i'm right outside his house we'll then be moving inside the city uh, to speak to the royals and mukhtar abbas nakvi says that uh, it's it's development alone which uh, will convince people to vote yogi adityanath again in fact he mentions a very interesting thing that the my which uh, uh, up very famously knew as the muslim yadav combination has been changed to modi and yogi of course mr uh, mukhtar abbas nakvi has his own style with words uh, he also said that uh, the hijab horror show is a disinformation campaign over a uniform they were di- there was disinform over uniform so uh, the mention of hijab the mention of hindu muslim continues as far as the bjp is concerned it happened in phase 1 it is happening in phase 2 as well uh, the chief minister uh, also gave an interview just a short while ago where he seemed to clarify uh, the 80 20 remark he said it was not in the context of religion very interesting that he has to make this clarification on the day of the second poll we have saurabh shukla also joining us from bareilly good morning saurabh what's happening there uh um, sanket the weather is very good no fog at all where you are staying standing there is a lot of fog but i am here weather is very much clear people are voting and people are voting in good numbers in bareilly sanket in 2017 bjp had won all the nine seats of bareilly but this time 
things are different. You've been mentioning about uh, Yogi Adityanath has just given an interview to ANI where, has clear, where he has clarified 80-20 remark. Why is he doing that? Because in these seats where today uh, polling, is, uh, polling is happening, in fact you are standing in Rampur, where 49.5% uh, voters are Muslim. I'm standing in Bareilly, almost 25%. In Amroha, 45%. Muradabad, 45.2%. Sambal above 45 percent, Bijnor 41 percent. So it has all the seats have decided. Muslim can be deciding factors. That is why on the day of polling, Ayogya Nath is clarifying that it was not on the basis of religion. It was on the basis of development and other things. He has clarified in the past also. But let's talk about Bareilly first, uh, Sanket. Nine seat BJP had won, but this time things are different. In fact, uh, uh, Bareilly has uh, almost six six rural seats where Samadhi Party is giving tough fight to uh, BJP. In fact, last time, right now I'm standing in uh, uh, Bareilly Cant. Bareilly Cant, uh, Rajesh Agarwal was member of, uh, member of uh, Legislative Assembly from here. He was uh, denied ticket this time and ticket has been given to Sanjeev Agarwal, uh, a, a, trade, a trade leader from, uh, uh, from the town. He is giving tough fight. And Supriya Aran, who was with Congress, ex-mayor, and her husband, Praveen Aran, you know, uh, Sanket, he was member of parliament from Congress. So she left Congress and joined Samajdi Party. In fact, Akhilesh Adav had come in Bareilly to do a press conference. So this time, battle is tough. In fact, the addition seat of Bandayu, where BJP had won five seats out of six, uh, out of six seats, BJP had won five seats in 2017. So if you talk about Bareilly, if you talk about uh, Sajahapur, if you talk about Bandayu, these are the stronghold uh, of BJP and BJP is trying hard to retain its fort. That is why Yogi Adhanath held a, uh, a huge roadshow here in Bareilly. They understand the importance of the second phase. In first phase, Sanket, as you've been analyzing, analyzing that in last phase, 50, out of 58 seats, BJP had won 40, 53 seats. And in this phase, out of 58, 55 seats, BJP had won 38 seats. 15 seats to Samadhi Party and 3 seats to Congress. Congress, I don't think that they have, they are having... Uh, they are standing any chance in this particular phase. They are f giving tough fight in three or four seats, but they don't seem they don't okay. seem to be in fight very much. But Samadhi Party very important. So BJP will try hard to retain its uh, at least at least 30 seats, but seem to be difficult because I don't think that Muslim votes are getting divided this time. Muslims are silent. They are not uh, talking much well, uh, on hijab. They are not talking much on Jinnah. They are not talking much on Pakistan. They are silent. Absolutely. And I don't see well, you Muslim know, votes sort of, getting divided. Sort of so we have to wait people, for that. Different assessments. But the point is that, that the point is that in every political calculation, nobody seems to be making the mistake of considering uh, you know, monolithic voting patterns, which means that an entire community is going to vote as a block in favor of someone. That mistake, neither the Samajwadi Party nor the Bharatiya Janata Party seem to be making. Uh, I think the one interesting point over here is when you have a 58% uh, population of the, of the Muslims in a constituency, and if the BJP is hopeful of winning, I don't know whether they will, but Gargi, if they're hopeful of winning, the BJP feels that it cannot happen without the Muslims voting for us. And I asked this question of Mr. Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi and he said that Muslim women, women voters are definitely going to vote the BJP in. And the key issues are not going to be Hindu-Muslim rhetoric of the BJP. It is going to be uh, ration that is being provided and more importantly, law and order. So from here on, while there will be... Uh, you know, a regular sprinkling of this uh, uh, polarizing politics, one can definitely expect the BJP cornering the Samajwadi party on the issue of law and order. Will that find traction with the people? We'll know. All right, it's interesting. We're not even discussing the BSP here and many feel that, you know, there, there are going to be some surprises on that front. But thank you so much, uh, Sanket and uh, Sora for joining us with that. We'll slip into a short break and be back with more. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Well, let's move away from election news now. News from Karnataka, where amid the hijab row controversy and extension simmers, classes for high school starting from 9th to 10th resume today. Uh, Chief Minister Basavraj Bomai had ordered the closure of high schools last week on Tuesday after protests and confrontations that had taken place over the hijab issue. Uh, Section 144 was also clamped uh, within uh, 200 meters of surrounding areas of schools to ensure that peace is maintained. Uh, staff of schools have been uh, instructed to ensure students adhere to the uniform dress code. Remember, the High Court in its interim order on Friday said that no religious garments such as hijab or saffron scarves will be allowed inside the college campuses. The High Court hearing on this issue will continue. Let's go across to Shrija now uh, for more. And Shrija, what, what have the reports been like since the morning? We are at the moment at the Udupi Government Girls uh, School. Now, this is the very uh, location where the entire controversy broke out in the month of December, towards the end of December, and nearly after uh, four days, after where Chief Minister Baswaraj Bomai had ordered the closure of schools and colleges. Now, we see uh, the government has also resumed the classes for about uh, ninth and ninth grade and tenth grade. We are looking at students who are at the moment entering the school premises and remember various measures have been undertaken by uh, uh, the district administration including the police officers here in Udupi district remember section 144 has been clamped here and uh, just um, we also understand that uh, various security measures are in place at the moment but however we do not see uh, heavy police de uh, deployment as otherwise uh, spoken of for the section 144 which has been clamped in Udupi district, especially within 200 meters uh, in the surrounding areas of school premises. Now, what's also important to note that just a day after, remember just yesterday, uh, the Udupi MLA, Rakupati but he had uh, chaired a meeting, a peace meeting with the stakeholders, with some of the uh, parents as well, who were in attendance. This is also to ensure, including the police, to ensure that uh, the peace is maintained. There's no uh, where uh, law and order is being disturbed. So clearly he did speak about where certain schools that have prescribed a dress code or as per the instruction manual can be followed. Now that's exactly what he said on Sunday, also briefing the media persons here in Udupi district. But at the moment, what we're looking at, the ground reality is that um, the students are entering the school premises. It is calm at the moment. And this entire controversy broke out right from this particular school and the college premises. Addressing to this particular school is the uh, college as well for 11th and 12th, first PU and second PU, where a bunch of students, at least about six to eight students, where they had demanded they want to wear the hijab and attend classes Subsequently, they were barred from attending classes. So uh, right after that, we just did witness in the last uh, couple of weeks where protests had broken out, escalated uh, to other parts of the districts. But as far as uh, today is concerned, we are looking at where uh, students are entering the school premises and also ensuring where Section 144 that's being clamped, that there is no peace uh, that's being disturbed at the moment. Back to you. All right, and we can see uh, young girls, uh, they're coming in, uh, some are wearing the burqa. However, uh, perhaps when they enter the school, uh, that, that is removed. But yes, uh, so schooling resuming there in Karnataka for classes 9th and 10th today. And uh, the High Court will continue its hearing on the entire hijab issue. Well, let's get you news from Punjab now and after the January 5th security breach fiasco involving the Prime Minister that had taken place, the Punjab police are leaving nothing to chance to ensure security arrangements are in place for the Prime Minister's visit uh, to the state today. Uh, Punjab uh, goes to polls on Sunday and the Punjab police are on their toes to uh, put foolproof security arrangements in place as the Prime Minister visits Punjab, even as a five-member panel headed by a retired Supreme Court judge Indu Malhotra is finalizing its report on the breach in security and the PM security that took place on the 5th of January. Let's go across to Ghazali now for more. And Ghazali, what are farmer groups planning? I believe they are uh, planning uh, some sort of protest or uh, boycotting of the Prime Minister's visit. However, the police ensuring that all security is in place. See, once uh, what happened in, uh, in, in Firozpur on January 5th, after that, everything... Uh, is in control as per the Punjab police officials, the DGP, 
uh, and other senior officials of the intelligence department they have been coordinating uh, every area in and around the jalandhar district has been given to a specific ig level officer to ensure that there is no such incident with what happened back in january uh, what what is happening with farmers those farmer unions who are not contesting elections they have given a call that they will protest they will burn the effigy or the flags of the bjp effigy of the prime minister in in respective villages uh, to ensure that what the uh, punjab police has done that it has exchanged multiple notes among the intelligence officers and senior officials and among the set of correspondence is sent to field officer one also reads to go by and make arrangements as per verma commission inquiry report which looked into assassination of former prime minister rajiv gandhi so that sort of synergy is being coordinated between different forces already punjab is into election mode so there is a huge presence of central armed police forces so that is another relief for punjab police they are also manning the entire route from where pm will be arriving last time uh, uh, the prime minister had to take the road route from batinda to pirozpur but this time what the punjab police has ensured that one there should be no last minute changes whatsoever second that the road route has to be taken at, at a very minimum distance beyond that uh, the punjab police is also eyeing on all these protesters uh, from different unions any threats from uh, uh, extremist organization so these are certain measures which have been taken more so yesterday we was addressing a public rally in patiala district so he met the pm security as an election issue in the urban pockets of punjab so uh, that certainly will be an issue today itself but as of now punjab police is ensuring that no such untoward incident happens today when prime minister modi arrives here in jalandhar all right uh, thanks so much ghazali for joining us with those details so all the security measures are being taken ahead of the prime minister's visit In other news now the government on Sunday filed the draft papers with Markets Regulator Securities and Exchange Board of India that SEBI a for LIC Life Insurance Corporation IPO uh, through which it hopes to sell 5% equity stake the IPO issue is expected to be the country's largest public issue and will hit the capital markets in uh, March uh, the government will sell over 31 crore equity shares of LIC according to the draft red herring prospectus uh, the listing comes against the backdrop of foreign investors pulling out funds from the domestic market just as the government seeks to meet a sharply uh, trimmed div- divestment uh, target of the current financial year Now India Inc uh, bid farewell to the founder of Bajaj Auto and a pioneer of innovation Rahul Bajaj synonymous with the famous tagline Hamara Bajaj a Padma Awardee Rahul Bajaj who was 83 years old passed away in Pune In the 6 decades since he took over the family business in 1965 Rahul Bajaj emerged as a business colossus and a rare outspoken voice in corporate India. The legacy he inherited played a role. His grandfather Jamnalal Bajaj was not just an industrial pioneer but also a fearless champion of the freedom movement, closely associated with Mahatma Gandhi. Something Rahul Bajaj has spoken of more than once. Much more credit goes to the legacy we have inherited. The legacy they left, legacy the grandfather left There's no financial wealth left. There were one or two small Ramke Vaste companies, but the legacy of goodwill that he left was worth much more than billions. Under his watch, the Pune-based company exploded. Hamara Bajaj, as it was known, made millions of middle-class households mobile, pushing it to India's biggest-selling scooter. बुलंद भारत की बुलंद तस्वीर हमारा बजाज हमारा बजाज बुलंद टुडे द बजाज ग्रुप विद इंटरेस्ट इन ऑटो फाइनेंस एनर्जी स्टील होम अप्लायंसेस एंड शुगर इज वर्थ 8.6 लाख करोड़ इन 2005 बजाज स्टॉप्ड प्रोड्यूसिंग इट्स आइकॉनिक मच लव्ड चेतक स्कूटर स्विचिंग टू मोटर बाइक बुलंद भारत की बुलंद तस्वीर In an interview with his son Rajiv who took over the reins of the company in 2005 he spoke of the difficulty of that decision Emotional connect connect clearly says do not stop do something to do something to keep it on 
I'm not really convinced. He's tried to explain it to me quite often and he gets tired of explaining it to me. But uh, I'm not convinced that is the right solution. But as I understand him to say, I have to concentrate on motorcycles today. I want to focus on that today. And who knows tomorrow? We may come back with a bang. But yes, we have had discussions. We have a disagreement. But Rahul Bajaj, elected to the Rajya Sabha in 2006, would stay in the headlines as a fierce government critic across party lines. He told NDTV of how he stood up to Indira Gandhi after she split the party in 1969, when his father, a Congress MP, stayed with the rival faction. It was in 69 when, in her own interest, Indira Ji split the Congress and my father was a three-term member of uh, Lok Sabha from my home constituency, Vardha. Right. Uh, Lok Sabha, Vardha. Right. Uh, and she stayed put with Congo, with Murazi Desai. Right. And Hindra ji got very angry. She said, how can Kamal and they were in Villa Parle in Bombay in a school together. In UK they were, he was in Cambridge, she was in Oxford. I mean, they were also similar ages, uh, I don't know. Right. I mean, you know the story of the name and all that. Right. So naturally she understood, but she, she had called me that time. Like, we can get into trouble. Should I resign as chairman of all the companies? No, the company can be nationalized. Banks are nationalized. Uh, coal mines are nationalized. I don't care about it. Who is the nationalized? Where are they working? Jamuna Lal's grandson, Kamal Nair's son, where are they working? They are working. 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 During the Modi government, Rahul Bajaj kept up his reputation of speaking truth to power. In 2019, at an Economic Times event, he questioned Amit Shah on a range of issues from the rise of lynching incidents and no action on perpetrators to what he called an environment of fear. In his speech, he said, nobody from our industrialist friends will speak. An environment will have to be created. In UPA too, we could abuse anyone. You are doing good work, but despite that, we don't have the confidence that you will appreciate if we criticize openly. It is this quality that was noted in messages from across party lines and from his business peers. Harsh Koenka said the spine of Indian business has cracked. Uday Kotak said Rahul Bajaj was bold and fearless, a rare businessman who spoke truth to power. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw said she was devastated, that he was a dear friend and the country has lost a great son and nation builder. The Prime Minister said Rahul Bajaj will be remembered for his noteworthy contribution to the world of commerce and industry. Beyond business, he was passionate about community service and was a great conversationalist. Rahul Gandhi said Rahul Bajaj's passing is a big loss to India, that we have lost a visionary whose courage made us proud. With Sakshi Bajaj, Meher Pandey for NDTV. A total of 165 assembly constituencies across Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Goa vote in the second and second largest phase of these elections today. This will conclude the polling in Uttarakhand and in Goa in slightly more than a quarter of the seats in UP. In fact, in UP, 55 constituencies spread across nine districts are voting today amid an increasingly shrill polarized uh, campaign. And the Prime Minister also tweeted asking everyone to come out and cast their vote this morning. So a total of 55 seats are going to polls in UP. This phase of the Assembly polls in the state presents a region where the BJP's position has been a bit tentative despite imposing a performances elsewhere in the state. And one of the reasons is said to be the higher uh, Muslim uh, population in many of the constituencies. Let's go across to Alok who joins us from uh, Shah Janpur. Uh, and Alok, uh, tell us more about this particular phase of the polling and this is the one in which they're saying Samajwadi party seems to be in a better position in this particular phase also a, a several key contests very interesting contests in the state uh, well you're absolutely right so I'll just start by giving you a sense of where I am right now so I'm in the Shah Jahanpur district this is about uh, 150 to 160 kilometers uh, away from Lucknow in the central part of the state uh, the Vidhan Sabha that I am in right now is called Dadrol. Uh, Dadrol is a seat that is held uh, by the BJP currently. 
and uh, in Shah Jahanpur, out of the six districts uh, that are going to, uh, six assembly constituencies that are polling, five are held by the BJP. But uh, before I talk about the overall across Western Central UP, I also want to show you uh, these long queues of uh, voters over here who've been here since early in the morning to cast their vote. In fact, one interesting thing that I want to show you is. Uh, are these uh, gloves that have been given to every person. So uh, the election commission had said that they would uh, try and ensure that COVID protocol is followed. Is to wear their masks and to also use these gloves so that when they vote, uh, their hands do not uh, touch the voting machine. Uh, most of the people are wearing masks. You don't wear masks. Where are you? Javed Ali. Javed, where are you? From this area. From this area. What do you do? जी मेरी दुकान है दुकान है जी किस चीज की दुकान है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक की है चलिए मतलब मोबाइल मोबाइल की हां हां मोबाइल है फ्रिज है कूलर है ये सब की दुकान है सब कैसा चल रहा है आपका धंधा पिछले कुछ सालों से धंधा बहुत बेकार चल रहा है इस सरकार में तो बेकार हो गया सब ऐसे कोई बात नहीं मतलब धंधा भी उतना सही नहीं चल रहा है सावे दिल्ली ये मास्क कहां से लाया All right, Alok, uh, they're reporting uh, from Shahjahanapur. We'll try to go back to him in a bit, but let's go across to Rampur, which is a key contest uh, where you have, uh, in, in, in fact, uh, NDTV's Sanket uh, spoke with Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi as he was in line to cast his vote. सबसे पहला मेरा सवाल आपसे ये है कि रामपुर की हवा कहाँ जा रही है समाजवादी पार्टी का कहना नई हवा है नई सपा है। देखो रामपुर की हवा जो है वो आपने पहले ही कहा कि राम राम तो रामपुर की हवा जो है विकास की तरफ है विश्वास की तरफ है और साथ ही साथ जो है वो लोगों की सुरक्षा और सुशासन के पक्ष में है जब पिछले पांच साल पहले जो सरकार थी उस सरकार ने जिस तरह से लोगों के विकास को लोगों के विश्वास को सुरक्षा को हाईजेक किया था और जो थ्री बी ब्रदरहुड है बलवाइयों का ये थ्री बी क्या है ये थ्री बी मतलब बलवाइयों का बाहुबलियों का और बकैतों का ब्रदरहुड था और ये जो है बलवाइयों बाहुबलियों और बकैतों का जो थ्री बी ब्रदरहुड था इसमें सिर्फ समाजवादी पार्टी है सब लोगों को आपने लपेटा है अब इसमें जो है थ्री बी बिड में तो जो पिछली पांच साल पहले जो सरकार थी उसमें तो उन्होंने हाईजेक कर रखा था अब योगी जी ने आके थ्री बी ब्रदरहुड का बंटाधार किया उसके अलावा जो यहाँ पर एक बहुत आम बात थी कट कमीशन कम्युनलिज्म करप्शन ये तो कैरेक्टर बन गया था सरकार का उसका खात्मा हुआ है और सुशासन और विकास के जरिए सभी समाज के हिस्सों की आंखों में खुशी और जिंदगी में खुशहाली का माहौल पांच सालों में बना है वो बरकरार फिर भी ध्रुवीकरण करने की प्रयास क्यों होता है जैसे कि जब मुख्यमंत्री वोटिंग से पहले ये बोल देते हैं कि कश्मीर केरल बंगाल ना बन जाए तो ये ध्रुवीकरण करने की कोशिश नहीं है देखिए पहली बात यह है कि इससे ध्रुवीकरण कहाँ होता है आप अगर आप केरल की बात करा उन्होंने केरल में किस तरह की संकट और किस तरह की समस्याएं हैं इसको कमनल क्यों कह रहे हैं आप या जो है वो जिन कश्मीर की बात करें जो संकट समस्याएं थी तीन सौ सत्तर के बाद उसका समाधान की नकवी जी उसका इस प्रदेश की दिक्कत से क्या लेना इस प्रदेश की दिक्कत से बहुत लेना है ये प्रदेश इसी देश में है और इस प्रदेश की जो है विकास जो है वो देश के विकास से जुड़ा हुआ है लेकिन आप जब एक तरफ बात करते हैं इन सब चीजों की तो ऐसा लगता है जैसे कि विकास के फ्रंट पर बात करने के लिए शायद उतना कुछ नहीं है इस वजह से ये ध्रुवीकरण की गाड़ी मैंने आपको दो चीज बताई हमने कहा जब हम पिछली बार सरकार में आए तो हमने तीन महत्वपूर्ण वादे किए थे कि हम उत्तर प्रदेश को बलवाइयों से मुक्त करेंगे और बलवों से मुक्त करेंगे उत्तर प्रदेश को बाहुबलियों से मुक्त करेंगे और उत्तर प्रदेश को बेईमानों और बकैतों से मुक्त करेंगे हमने करके दिखाया दुल्ला आजम और आजम खान के बारे में आपको क्या कहना है दोनों इस बार एक जेल से मुकाबला कर रहे हैं और एक उनके पुत्र है सुहा जेल में हो या कोई रेल में हो वोट तो जनता को देना है तो इसलिए जनता तय करेगी किसको फिर भी हिजाब को लेकर के हम देखते हैं कि बीजेपी के नेताओं से ज्यादा बयान आते हैं कि हिजाब ऐसा हिजाब वैसा कर्नाटक का मसला यहाँ मुद्दा राहुल, क्यों राहुल गांधी जी बीजेपी के नेता हैं प्रियंका वाड्रा गांधी जी बीजेपी के नेता हैं है प्रसाद मौर्य है योगी आदित्यनाथ मैं बताता हूँ किसने जो है वो शुरू किया यूनिफॉर्म पर मिस इनफॉर्म करने का कंपेन किसका था राहुल गांधी उसके बाद यूनिफॉर्म के मुद्दे पर जो है वो मैं लड़की हूँ क्या है लड़ सकती हूँ उन्होंने हिजाब बिकनी पे क्या क्या कर डाला ये बीजेपी के नेता हैं क्या वो पाकिस्तान से जो है वो पाकिस्तान पाखंडी प्रोपगंडा होता है वो बीजेपी के नेता है क्या 
हिजाबी हृदंग जो स्ट्रीट पे हो रहा है वो बीजेपी के लोग कर रहे थे कांग्रेस के झंडों के साथ सवाल ये बताइए आपको लगता है कि जनता जो है यहाँ की वो हिजाब जैसे मुद्दों पर अपने जहन में रखेगी हिजाब के मुद्दे पर जो भड़काने भटकाने की कोशिश थी खासतौर से मुस्लिम महिलाओं को उनकी तालीम उनकी तरक्की उनके तहफ़ पर ताला लगाने की तालिबानी ताला लगाने की कोशिश करी थी वो एक्सपोज हो चुकी है और यहाँ पर जो है वो इस एक एक इसी के पीछे इसका एक कारण ये भी था कि मोदी जी मोदी 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 कर रही थी सब लोग तो उनका ये महिलाएं मोदी के साथ होंगी समाज का सभी वर्ग साथ है उसमें महिलाएं All right, that was Muktar Abbas Nakvi in Rampur as he casts his vote. But let's go across now to Bareilly, and uh, Saurabh Shukla joins us from the polling booth there. Saurabh, uh, tell us more about this particular phase of elections in Uttar Pradesh, and in the, this is the one where they're saying the Samajwadi Party is in a better position. Uh, and tell us about the polling booth you're at. Uh, Gargi, very interesting fight here, as you have asked. to analyze second phase of voting it's a very important phase for bjp first two phases are very important phase of bjp for bjp in fact in first phase as we were discussing earlier also out of 58 seats bjp had 153 seats in first phase in second phase out of these 55 seats bjp had 138 seats so strike rate of above uh, 60% here in uh, second phase as well so now onus is on bjp in bareilly nine seats out of 9 uh, out of 9 seats bjp had won but things are little bit different now in today in second phase the cities which are polling the constituency which, which are polling which which has dominant muslim votes for example rampur has almost 50% of muslim population almost 49.8% 50% of muslim population 50% muslim voters let's go to uh, bijnor 41% muslim voters Muradabad, 45% Muslim uh, voters. Sambal, 45% Muslim voters. Their Muslim voters, Muslim uh, population is less. Muslim voters are less. Their BJP uh, had won decisively in 2017. But now things are different. Though uh, OYC had campaign in these areas, he had appealed Muslim voters not to vote for Samajwadi Party. He is saying that Samajwadi Party is quite on the issue of hijab. Samajwadi Party uh, is seeking votes of Muslim, but they have not done anything for Muslims. these kind of are uh, these kind of arguments from some uh, from aimim but i don't see muslim votes getting divided on ground but very decisive face for uh, uh, samajwadi party samajwadi party according to my sources they have high hopes from second phase of polling they think that uh, they will gain from here in fact last time also they had won 15 seats in bjp's we what we call in hindi bjp's leher they had won 15 seats and in lok sabha also they had performed very well in fact they uh, mem- uh, some, uh, bsp and sp alliance got saranpur seat bsp's mla fazul rahman from saranpur in sambal uh, safi kor rahman burg in muradabad also they have member of parliament there also in bjp's leher of 2000 in modi's leher of bjp uh, in 2019 so samajwadi party has very high hopes uh, from uh, the second phase of election aim im in fact bsp has fielded several muslim candidates so we have been talking to people uh, today in the morning in fact last evening as well uh, especially uh, to the muslim voters and we were asking that is muslims getting divided this time uh, are you going to vote for bsp bsp has fielded a muslim candidate from here in fact in bareilly cant uh, we know taqir raza he supported congress he is saying that we are going to support give our uh, support to congress but I don't see Muslim Muslim votes getting divided on ground. They have they are quiet. In fact, we have seen in previous elections Muslims were quite vocal about their issues. It, 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 if it was about triple talaq and um, and other issues, but this time on hijab, on uh, Pakistan, on Jinnah, they are quiet. They are not saying anything. They understand the importance of their vote this time. They are quiet and they are quietly voting. They are not vocal about it, but. i feel that this time with muslims will not get divided a decisive poll for samajwadi party samajwadi party as i as i mentioned earlier they had very they have very high hopes in fact in bareilly in rampur rampur akhilesh adav had uh, uh, rath yatra in bareilly he he had um, he had come uh, rath yatra and then later he held a press conference asking their workers uh, to uh, uh, to mark their voters to take them to the booth so uh, uh, samajwadi party voters can come out and cast their vote so so that is why they are working really hard especially samajwadi party seem to be gaining in rural areas where uh, uh, strike cattle is a huge issue a poll issue our uh, villagers are saying that they need uh, support from government in fact uh, their crop is getting destroyed by cattle so one and uh, one important last point uh, gargi i would like to highlight 
Ashish Mishra Taini, he had got bail on 10th of uh, February. In Tarai region, especially in Bareilly, Bandayu, there are significant population of Sikh. Farmer agitation had impact here also. So I had a word with few Sikh uh, farmers as well. They are saying that it is not good. Though uh, he has got bail from High Court, but government did not uh, put their case strongly. That is why he has got bail from High Court. So it is, it is also, a, uh, Ashish Mishra, Taini's bail is also an issue here uh, in Bareilly and Banayu. So very important, crucial phase for uh, BJP and Samadhi Party. Samadhi Party is trying to gain uh, from this phase and BJP is trying to uh, retain its 38 seats uh, which they got in 2017. Gargi. All right, Saurabh, thanks so much for joining us with that and several issues uh, that are playing out on the ground. And from Saurabh in Bareilly, uh, let's go across to Sanket who joins us from Rampur. And this is one of the very interesting uh, fights, isn't it, of this election, Rampur, where you have Azam Khan contesting uh, from jail. Also, Sanket, this morning, uh, the chief minister uh, gave an interview where he spoke about, you know, various issues. Right, Sanket, if you can hear me. Yeah, sorry, Gargi, I think I lost uh, your uh, question, something to do with the, the, the mobile network. But uh, yes, Rampur, a very, very interesting contest. Uh, if we talk about Rampur Sadar, the main seat, uh, this is a contest between uh, BJP's uh, you know, Hindu candidate, uh, the Congress's uh, Royal Nawab, Nawab Qasim Ali, and of course the jailed Samajwadi Party leader, Azam Khan. Now, uh, the Samajwadi Party has campaigned in this entire region without Azam Khan, without his influence, without the very tall, towering uh, an office infamous for being uh, too notorious uh, in, in, in controlling uh, you know, voters, that sort of influence. Without that, that influence of Azam Khan, without that acerbic tongue that many people associate with Azam Khan, this contest uh, is taking place. We just a short while ago spoke to Congress's Nawab Qasim Ali of the royal family here, and he says that he is not a political prisoner. He is not being uh, been imprisoned because uh, he was participating in uh, you know some some freedom movement. He is a criminal. He has gone in there as a, uh, you know, for, for uh, committing crimes. And that is why he will gain no sympathy or have no sympathy on the ground. But when you speak to people in Rampur and otherwise, uh, you will realize that uh, it's, it's, the, uh, it's, it's the general mood among the Muslims as of this moment where they feel that, uh, uh, that they need to vote in favor of, uh, uh, of an alliance. And that alliance is the Samajwadi. They may have their reasons for not liking uh, some of the things or the, some of the decisions that the alliance has taken. But uh, generally, this is the mood. The BJP is very confident that not only will they win, despite the fact that there is a 58% population of Muslims in Rampur, they feel that many of the Muslim women are going to vote for the BJP candidate. So that's why Rampur becomes a very interesting contest. Of course, a member of the royal family, uh, the son of Nawab Qasim Ali, Hamza Mia, as he's called, Heather Ali Khan. He is part of a BJP alliance team called Apna Dal. Uh, and he is contesting from Suar Tanda, which is about 30 kilometers from here. And he is up against Azam Khan's son, Abdullah Azam. Now, Abdullah Azam also, you know, he cried in front of people. He said that uh, all sorts of efforts were made uh, to show that, uh, you know, basically cancel my nomination. Uh, but here I am. Who will convince people? Uh, you know, the voters of Suar Tanda, that important constituency, is also going to be very, very significant. Hamza Mia, the, the, you know, who follows the royal bloodline, is striking a very emotional chord. He's trying to tell people that, you know, I have an emotional association with the, uh, with the people here. So, uh, vote for me on that front. Give me a chance. However, Abdullah Azam says that I have been your MLA for the past five years, so you can judge me on a track record. Interesting contest here. Perhaps, uh, uh, you know, eclipses other important contests that are taking place in the other parts of phase two. But one important thing that I want to tell you, Gargi, before I hand back, is that all candidates uh, in Rampur have a very peculiar thing to say. All of them fear that they will be killed. At various stages in the campaigning, all of them right. have said that we feel that there is a threat to our life. Abdullah Azam says there is a threat to his life. Azam Khan says the same. 
uh, Nawab Qasim Ali says the same and the BJP's candidate also says the same. All right. Uh, thanks so much, Sanket, for joining us. Sanket, they're reporting uh, from Rampur as the second phase of elections in UP is underway. Also underway are elections in Goa and in Uttarakhand. And time for us to take a short break. But take a look. Here is the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand, Dhami, casting his vote.